Chuck Shive with C. Andrew Chips and Tips. Today we're going to cover the top five gasketing techniques and the advantages of each with gasketing specialist Mr. Mike Murphy from All Star CNC. Thanks for coming in today, Mike, to show what our customers can do to hold their parts better. Take it away. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, Mike Murphy here with All Star. Happy to be here. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at five different gasketing concepts that we have available to folks who are trying to improve the vacuum performance of the router. Uh, first is going to be the grid gasket for the table itself that everyone's familiar with. But then when we want to get into holding parts, which is the most important thing we're trying to do, we'll steer customers towards spoil board applications. Uh, and those are going to be things like onboard gasketing and tile gasketing, or we talk about dedicated fixtures for repetitive parts, where we're going to look at inboard gasketing and cover gasketing. Since every shop's going to be a little bit different, no size fits all, uh, we'll look at these different ideas, how they're going to be used in each application, and we'll go from there. So when we talk about improving a vacuum's performance with the ability to hold a part, the number one thing is leak prevention. So the first place we start is at the table with grid gasket. Grid gasket is going into the outermost edge of the table or into zones if the table has the ability to make zones. Uh, typically a non-adhesive product, square or round, sticks into the channel, sticks above by about a sixteenth of an inch to have that lip seal all the way around. Maybe replace it once a year or so to get that fresh seal because we're trying to eliminate vacuum leak. And if that's enough under your spoil board or under your fixture board to hold parts, great. Uh, but if not, we can look at some different techniques to then start to hold parts with gasketing as well. So now that we've got the table secured with a proper gasket material, it comes down to the part. If you can't hold the part with vacuum, we need to improve that vacuum performance. And how do we do that is with gasket material to make an airtight system. Uh, for those customers doing repetitive parts, I think the best way to do it is with a dedicated fixture for those dedicated jobs. Best way to make a dedicated fixture is using a non-porous material. Get away from the leaky MDF that you would use with a spoil board. And with a dedicated fixture, you have an airtight system. We put a gasket material in the outermost channel, maybe with a slight chamfer at the top to give that gasket a little extra relief room. Some channels to disperse the vacuum across the face of the part. Some holes to get that vacuum through this non-porous board to the part itself. And of course, we have a gasket, a grid gasket under that fixture to make sure we have that airtight system. And when we get that, we can get more parts in less time, eliminate onion skins and tab cuts, and really start getting these parts done quick. So the second product that we have for those customers doing repetitive parts on a dedicated fixture is our cover gasketing. Customers will usually graduate towards the cover gasket when they're doing the really small parts. Really small parts are difficult to hold because they're a limited surface area. By using a cover gasket product, we're able to maximize that surface area bring that gasket out to the very edge of the part, into the tight angles, and get that vacuum pocket as close to the tool as we can, because the tool is what's causing the carnage, that's what's causing, the, causing that part to move. So the closer we can get that clamp to the edge of the part is what we're trying to do. And with the cover gasket, it really allows maximum surface area for the part, try to get more parts and less time on those dedicated fixtures. So with any dedicated fixture, creating it takes a little bit of time and effort to put that together. But the idea is once we create that dedicated fixture to allow for an airtight clamp on the part, we're able to cut more parts in less time. So what we do here is with this dedicated fixture, a non-porous material, in this case a phenolic, to not leak, we've covered the entire fixture with a cover gasket material, then with an engraving tool, in this case to get a really clean edge on all of our gasket that's left behind, both for the edge of the part and our vacuum pocket that we're going to use to clamp onto that part, we're able to in-house design where we want it to maximize the overall vacuum pocket area of the part that we're trying to clamp onto. So when customers are cutting random parts uh, and they don't have the time nor the desire to make a dedicated fixture like we talked about before, they're going to be in that spoil board environment, a downdraft MDF board to get different parts, universal coverage of their vacuum system. But if they're still having problems with vacuum performance on holding that part, they're still gasketing solutions in order to create that proper seal. And the best way to do that is with our onboard gasketing. Onboard gasketing, good for prototypes, short runs, kind of a quick and dirty idea on how to get this part sealed. Quick and easy way to, to demo, we'll just take a quick trace of the part that we're going to hold on to. We may know that our vacuum isn't strong enough to hold on to that part. So we'll take some of this gasket material and just run it just to the inside of that path that we're going to have for that part. It doesn't have to be perfect. And we have a variety of different thicknesses, densities, and widths for the different applications that a customer may come to us with. But once we create that pocketed area with gasket material, 
and we have the ability to test our vacuum now with gasket and without, we can tell major difference without gasketing and with gasketing. There's no way for that part to move once we have the vacuum removed from underneath that part. Versus with the, ga with the vacuum on, no gasket. With gasketing, the part's not gonna move. Holds those parts better, get a cleaner edge, more parts in less time, eliminate those onion skins and tap cuts on those short runs that are sometimes a tough thing to gasket for. So our latest product offering for those spoil board customers is our tile gasket. Again, spoil board, boards that are intended to be spoiled, we're gonna chew into them, we're gonna sacrifice them as we cut all those random parts, one part here, one part there, never doing that repetitive work. We need that spoil board environment. And typically, customers using a spoil board environment are using an MDF spoil board, which is 100% drafty. The, the entire surface is drafty, vacuum passing through there to allow for 100% coverage of the table area but what that also does is allows a lot of leak, a lot of draft, a lot of wasted vacuum pressure. When we cover that same MDF spoil board with these tile gasket products, quarter inch hole every one inch, what that does, it takes all that vacuum pressure and concentrates it to these holes and allows for maximum vacuum performance, maximum vacuum clamp, because we have a closed cell item creating a seal, creating a clamp, a lip of the freezer door concept to hold onto that sheet as we cut. And as we start to wear these items, just as you would a spoil board, instead of spoiling the board, we're not gonna spoil the tile. And the idea is as that tile starts to wear, we just replace one tile at a time. No need to continue to draft, uh, downdraft your spoil board or fly cut, reset your tooling depths. This is gonna be your surface, your Z depth the whole time. Very easy to get more production quickly while you're doing better vacuum systems with the tile gasket material. So we'll finish putting some of these tiles on the entire MDF spoil board, and we'll start to get into some tests to see what kind of apples to oranges comparison we can make using tile gasketing versus without, and really the ability of the vacuum system to hold on to these parts, and if we're really making an improvement. Because when we make an improvement and we can cut parts faster, put them quicker, more parts in less time, we're really making a difference for those customers. So thank you for the folks at Sierra Ronsrud here for welcoming me into the facility here. Beautiful shop, uh, American manufacturing, love seeing it. Our customers all doing American manufacturing. In my opinion, to do it, we need to do it quick, we need to do it fast, we need to do it efficiently. And to do that, let's vacuum better. Let's hold parts better, let's cut them better so that we can profit better. And give them a call at Ronsrud. They have all of our gasketing products, more than happy to supply them. If there's more specific questions that I can help with, give me a call, Mike at allstarcnc or allstarcnc.com. More than happy to help you out in any way we can.